Hi, I'm Dave, and in this episode I'll be fitting some Toda camshafts to my Alteza in the pursuit of more horsepower. It's important to remember that this isn't a how-to as such, because I make mistakes and for entertainment purposes have left those mistakes and their fixes in the story. So if you watch the whole video and understand the whole video, then by the end you will understand how to do this, but I wouldn't advise that you fit your camshafts while watching this. Also keep in mind that I've already covered how to pull this all apart in a previous video, so now that all that how-to stuff is out of the way, I want to show you the behind the scenes stuff. I need to be put on a medieval torture device. Stretch my back out. Put me on the rack. Rack city bitch. Rack, <laughs> <laughs> rack city bitch, rack, rack city bitch. Konnichiwa. Yeah, um, so now it says remove the last. Remove camshaft timing gear assembly. My back hurts so bad and I'm really, really not happy. Oh, just pain. Remove the bolts and remove the camshaft timing oil control valve. Okay, that's that one. And that one, I think. Get this out of here. How does that come out? Is pull? Oh, yep. Oh, there's some oil. Excellent. It did say to um, make sure you have some rags handy, so guess what I didn't do? Rag city bitch, rag rag city bitch. Okay, we're all uh, all ragged up. Get the other one out. What'd you do last night? I was on the phone to Dave while he was pulling his shit apart. F it was boring. I just looked at Jumanji for fucking three hours. If you see something move, let me know. Dave, run! That'll give me some entertainment. You know who Benny Hill is, right? Yeah. Yeah, that Benny Hill music starts playing. I'm running around in circles away from some giant animal. Turn the camshaft timing gear assembly left and right two or three times within the possible range, 25 to 28 degrees, and catch all oil out of the inside of the camshaft timing gear from the camshaft timing oil control valve mounting hole within the... Okay, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I'm I'm already over this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm out. Like, if I could walk away from this right now, I f would. Cause you, yeah, your boys, your boys stressed on this. I've had enough of this dripping oil crap. We're just gonna get this out now. Captain Ugga Dugger over here fits in just above the uh, radiator hose. So here we go. I'm glad I got this tent out. Imagine doing this outside in the sun. Wait for winter. I would have advised to roll every K car out of your garage and put that in the garage. Yeah. Just push everything out of the street and deal with the complaints. There's a set order for removing the cams. So you don't snap the cam in half. I've done that before on a, a front wheel drive SR20 a, a DE. Thought we were doing them up in the correct pattern and we weren't and snapped the cam in half. Didn't even notice, put the car back together, ran missing a cylinder couldn't figure out why took the rocket cover off and started it and part of the cam wasn't spinning oh the cam was just chilling flipping you off yep just yeah. um so here we are we used that to hold that in place and use the ra rattle gun to undo the cam gears now we have to use the set pattern to undo the camshafts okay so this is number one just loosen that off a bit this is number two three four five six seven eight nine ten riveting viewing this then we take the cam caps off they're labeled mate need to get the cam oil seal out very gently with a screwdriver done now to lift off. There we go. And that's how you remove the cams. As we open the box, we get that. And I don't know what it says. Cam shaft. So this has got, this is taped on. Okay, that's all pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, over we go. Now we've got information about uh, cam shafts in general. And I don't really know what that any of that means this is the cam profile information 
this is the in. So I think we'll take this out of the box, put it on the engine, and then uh, put the in cam in this box. Pull this out of the box. Be sure to throw it on the ground real quick. All right, it's just in there with, uh, with foam. Stealth, do not unwrap until ready for use. Yep. And here she is, mate. Here it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, that's them side by side. Yeah, there's nothing really different visibly. Let's take the OEM cam out. As we lift this one up, and we'll put this one in in its place. Right, wrap this one up. Put that there. Wrap it in the same material. And back in the toter box. Let's do the exhaust cam. Gonna open this up. And we'll do the same thing. We'll sit it next to the OEM one in the same sort of pattern. Let's get you out of there. Put you up here. Put you down in there. Okay, wrap this up. Fold that over, fold that over, wrap it in foam, and then back in the box. This is my favorite part, racing use only. Whose idea was this? Go in A, they said. F***ing easier, they said. Just drop some cams in. I'm just rubbing this down with some oil on my gloves, getting it into all of the, the areas because I don't have assembly lube. Very gently lower that into place. I think that's pretty damn oily, honestly. I've got this little pourer, so I'm gonna put some oil in there. This is gonna make me able to pour into the journals. Just wanna put a drop or two in each hole. Any more grooves I can see that don't have any oil in them. Just gonna put some in. We have got oil absolutely everywhere, so I'm not too worried about lubrication, really. Right, apply a small amount of engine oil to journal parts, done. Set the camshaft on the cylinder head, putting the camshaft pin in the position shown in the diagram. Now the instructions are talking about this thing here. I'm not sure if I got a new one of those or not. I don't wanna do any more. My body hurts, I don't wanna do any more. But I have to, cause I'm here. This is something I actually missed, not afraid to admit that. You need to remove this from the end of the exhaust camshaft and put it on the new one. Don't forget to do that. You can do this out of the car, just hold this with a 24 mil spanner and then undo the end with uh, your preferred tool. So I'm gonna do that and then whack it on the end of there. 42 newton meters on this bolt on the end here. So it's gonna be quite, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get that out of there. Uh, see how we go. Rattle gun got it out without any trouble at all. There it is there. Can only go in one way. So yeah, like that. I'm gonna pick this thing up, put it on here, run our bolt in just a little bit. Get it seated, put this in. Just down here on the box, I was able to use a, a shifter. This piece on the TOTA cam is actually bigger than the OEM cam. Be aware, this is 25 mil and the OEM cam is 24. It's a 14 mil torque wrench on the other end, set to 42 newton meters. Do it up and you're good to go. Not difficult to do, just don't forget to do it. We started off with day one, day two, but I don't even know what day it is anymore because uh, I keep progressing and then finding out I need to buy something and then yeah, that goes, takes two days for that thing to arrive. We need to rotate the crankshaft 90 degrees to the left. After we've done that, all the pistons move down to a safe level and we can do whatever the hell we like up here. We put these in the correct position, then move the crank back to vertical and we're all set up again. So I'm just gonna reach in here, two hands, and try and rotate the crank. Ah, oh, easy. It's 
easy. Ugh, no, it's not. Getting the um, spark, one of the spark plugs out of there would be helpful. So that's a size 16 mil for anybody playing at home. NGK Iridium. That's what we're in there. I had no idea. Hmm. What does that tell you? Whoa! Oil. Um, well, that's interesting. And that one's rich. Okay, rotate the crank to 90 degrees away from top dead center. So the doing up order of this is going to be one, two, and we're there. Okay, so that's torqued up. Now we need feeler gauges. I'm gonna use a shifter on the supplied areas there. I rotate until the, the high point of the cam is away from the bucket at the bottom. Valve clearance, so we need page 82 in. When cold, definitely cold. Between 0.17 and 0.27, so let's go. You might be asking yourself, what the hell is he even talking about? So I'll do my best to explain. The camshaft has these lumps on it, and as the cam spins, the lumps push on these things here called buckets, and they are like an upside down bucket. Under the bucket, there is a spacer called a shim. Then we have a bunch of other stuff we don't care about right now, a spring, and then the valve. The valve needs to move up and down the correct amount. So as you can imagine, if the spacer, AKA shim, is the wrong size, it's not gonna move the correct amount. So we measure from the low side here to the bucket here with a tool called a feeler gauge. It's literally a collection of slithers of metal less than a millimeter thick. And we get a number. If that number is too big or too small, we know that the shim is the wrong size. So you just rotate the cam and check underneath each lump to see how it's sitting. Okay, so it's less than two. We know that much. 0.19, try and get that in there. 0.19 won't fit. 0.18, yeah. Okay, so it's 0.18, that's within spec. Write it down because if you don't, you're gonna forget. 0.18, you fit? Yep, 0.18 fits. That fit in quite easily. Let's try two. Two doesn't fit. 0.19, I don't believe my results. 0.19, next one. Not overly difficult, just, just a pain in the ass. 0.18's not fitting in there. Try 0.17. I can't get 0.17 in there. This might be too tight. I might be changing one. 0.16? 0.16. That one's out of spec. Okay, all right. Let's check the other side, same manner. Okay, 2.5 to 3.5 on the exhaust. All right, so that's, that's done. We've checked all of those and we've found that one of them is out of spec that very back one there. So we're gonna have to pull it all apart, pull that shim out, measure it, find out how thick it is, and then order one that's bigger, uh, well, one step bigger than what's in it, and then we'll be fine. Simply reinstall the spark plugs. Okay, done. Right, ah, oh, damn it. The, um, the rubber stopper got stuck down in there, didn't it? <laughs> Dave tries to install spark plugs. This really does suck. This is horrible. Why can't I get the tweezers to grab the thing? <laughs> this is f I'm gonna have to get a pick. That's what you needed. See? Terrible. Right. I didn't go buy the tool to be able to measure the thickness of that because I don't have one called a micrometer. Thankfully, I know where I can buy one. I hope they've got them in stock, but they don't necessarily have them in stock. I went and got my micrometer, so now I need to pull the intake cam out again. Smoking hot tip. If you want to use microphones, you got to turn them on. You already saw me do this once. I'm not sure you want to see me do it again. Okay. All right, now I don't know how these come out. I was under the impression they just lift out. They've probably got oil suction going on. Bare fingers, dare I try it. I might have more grip. No. <laughs> nope. That was, a, that was a convincing no. I bet you're supposed to use a special tool for this. They don't rotate out, do they? No, it doesn't appear so. You just have to pull them, but how? How do you pull them out? Page 83, 83, 83, here we go. It just says remove it, it doesn't say how. I'm gonna have to get up here to have a look. Better look. 
can I come from underneath and, and push it up? No. No, there's no way to get underneath it. How do you lift this up? I don't have a tool for this. Oh, she's coming. Okay, so it's just, just persistence. Here we are, we got it out. Now the shim is actually stuck in there. There she is. This is a micrometer, it's brand new. Try not to drop it. I went using one of these. You always want to turn it by this. It's got a ratchet on it, see that? That will stop you from over tightening it. Somehow, magically, with three hands, we're going to tighten it up. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Alternatively, you can use one of these. This is a digital caliper, or as I like to call them, caliper. Yeet. All right, so how thick is this? 3.02, apparently. Does it have anything written on it? It does not. And what do we get with this? 3.04. So it's between 3.02 and 3.04, whatever that is. So it's to the computer to find the next size down from that. This is my new shim. How's this? It's taken me so long to put this together that I actually went out and found assembly paste or assembly lube. So I've got some of that in this little squirter and I'm going ham on, on everything. So doing it properly out here. You might be in Japan wondering where I got the assembly paste from. I actually got it from a place called, I think it's Naps. It's a motorcycle shop. I like that shop. It's got uh, a lot of stuff you can't find anywhere else. I have to change that out. Uh, I think it just comes out with a pick. Let's give it a go. Yeah, very easily. There we go. Now it says in the instructions multiple times, do not touch the mesh. Well, that, one's, um, that one's going in the bin. But we're going to put a new one in and do not touch the mesh. Here she is. All the part numbers will be in the description. I've said it a thousand times over, all the part numbers will be in the description. So you won't have to go through what I went through, which is discovering what parts you need as you go. Comes with a little plastic cover over it. How's that? There we go. She's in. Done. Didn't touch the uh, mesh. Do not apply more than two millimeters of seal packing. So here we go along here, along there, and along the front. The drawing's not very good. I cleaned it up. I don't know if I could tell you how big two millimeters is. That looks about right to me. Someone in the comments is going, oh, it's too much. You put too much on. That looks like about two millimeters to me. Okay. Just a little bit of oil on this seal here. There we go. All right, we're going on. For the final time. Hopefully the final time. Need to do it up and then check my... Oh, I didn't... Oh, whoops. Oh, dear. Well, I hope it's going to be okay because I haven't checked that valve clearance yet. One, two, well, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and then we go back to the beginning again. It's intake and we need to be between 17 and 27. So the camera cut out and that's a shame because it was right before I rage quit. I checked the valve clearance and it was out of spec in the opposite direction, which means I ordered the wrong one. Tempers were lost, I ordered the correct shim, waited about three days for that to arrive, fitted it, tested it, and everything was fine, so I put it back together in the way that you saw me do in this video I made. This is not that difficult to do, but it sure is time consuming and you need to remain calm and very patient. 